Thanks a lot for being here, uh, for being with us at IDOS Montreal. Uh, today we're going to be playtesting uh, Deus Ex Human Revolution. Um, please just bear in mind that you're not here to uh, check bugs and to check technical issues with the game because this is a work in progress, so we're not looking for that here. We're looking to get uh, feedback on your own experience. So what did you like and what did you dislike about this game? How do you choose the people to become uh, testers? Uh, actually, we, we choose them according to a profile, uh, to a specific profile, usually to, uh, according to the kind of game that they play. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, let's say that uh, we want to have some people that are interested in RPG, we want to have some people that are interested also in shooters, because this is the kind of game that we're playing right now, they are playing right now with the Deus Ex. Um, you're not going to take, for example, somebody that is playing, that is in love with racing games that don't play any other games for the kind of games that doesn't make any sense. Something that you have to bear in mind also is that you're here to, um, to help us make a better game, make a, a better experience for people that are going to play the game afterwards. So we want to know your honest opinion about the game. Did you like it or not? We really, really want to know that, all right? So if you didn't like the game, we want to know it also because, uh, and that doesn't mean that you're not going to be invited in the future or that we're going to be mad at you because you didn't like the game. That's very, very important for us that you totally honest with your answers. People can go on our website, uh, Eidos Montreal website, and uh, what they do is that they can subscribe directly on the website, put their name and their information, and then afterwards we're able to, uh, to call them according to their profile. Something that you have to know also is that uh, in the other room, we're going to go in the, in the other room in uh, around five minutes, and there is a two-way mirror. That means that you have people behind, um, behind the glass that can hear you and see you, but please don't worry about it. They're not here to judge you and uh, say like, for example, you're a bad gamer, you're a, a good gamer. They're not here for that. They're just here to inquire and understand how you guys work with the game and if there are any issues with the game at the moment. That's it. It's a very unique experience. So we have to uh, verify that uh, what we have taught in the, in the game is, is easily understand by, by the player, you know, the message to uh, how I can use my tools, you know, to tackle the obstacle and everything. So this is about that, you know, make sure that everything the player has in front of him is clear. It's very important. We're trying to observe uh, their behavior in the game, so we're trying to make sure that everything is intuitive. So for example, we're trying to make sure that the controls are okay, uh, are they pressing the right button when they need to do something. Um, we're also trying to see if there are not any navigation issue. Uh, so can they go from point A to point B very easily, or does it make does it take like an hour to do that? So uh, we're just trying to make sure that everything is intuitive and uh, easy as possible for them. When we did the playtest for Alpha last year, we um, we look at the players and they were all mo mostly all playing the same, using their guns, running, shooting, and not using the the, 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 the augmentations, not trying to find out other ways or different tools to, to get the, jo the the job done, and. Uh, and uh, by uh, talking with them and, and asking them questions, we understood that the game was so easy mm -hmm. that there was no need to, to, to try uh, something new or whatnot. And, and uh, right now we're balancing the game. It's way tougher than it was. And now we see that the players now start to explore the augmentations, start to explore the physical objects, all the tools they have and everything. And like uh, yesterday, we were uh, watching uh, players going through a certain part of the game where there's a turret that you need to avoid. There's a hair vent you can go around. There are some crates you can navigate through it or try to just destroy it or whatnot. And uh, every player had a different story about that. One found the, uh, the air vent, went around it. Another one just went from cover to cover, got close, tried to shoot mm -hmm. uh, the thing, but it didn't really work. So just throw a grenade, destroy it. And another one was just picking up a crate and moving with it, getting close to the, the, uh, the, the uh, turret until he was um, uh, able to go around it without destroying it. So it was really, really uh, amusing to see them like uh, trying different things that us, when we play test it ourselves, we know the tricks and we just go for the, sh the shortest path or the simplest path or whatnot. So it's fun to have a, a different eye on yeah. uh, what's going on. Yeah. In the technology itself, uh, we have uh, the metric system uh, that allow us to uh, extract a lot of data from uh, from the playtest so you, you you could see um, a top of view of the area we, we, we just play, play tested sorry and you can see where the people uh, went uh, during the mission what kind of 
path they use, uh, what kind of uh, weapon they use during the, the mission and everything, where they have been killed a lot. And so that all of us, after that, to adjust, to balance the, mm. the, the mission. Yeah. It's about uh, one playtest per week now, to be sure that we have the time to balance and adjust everything. And, 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 uh, and uh, it, we are here for that, in fact, and uh, as, as much as we can, you know, to, uh, exactly. to absorb the, the information. Absolutely. And obviously there are certain things that you can't fix because of the time, or sometimes you need to, to, to see, like, you have one player that would like something, the other player would like another thing, and the other one, like when it's too split all over the place, you can't like try to, oh, I need to do this because the other one says the opposite. So there are some things that you're, you know what, we're going to go forward with that and assume it, and other things that are like uh, general, then we try to fix them as much as we can. I have a few questions for you guys. I just want to know, um, how was your experience? What did you like about the game and what did you dislike about it? From what I saw, I like the story. It's, yes. I think it's going to be really interesting. I wanted to play more. Um, what it, is interesting about the story? Um, I like the characters. I like yes. how Adam interacts with the other characters. I like how he was inter. I don't remember the other guy's name, but how they were speaking on the plane together. Uh -huh. I like the dialogue and the. I, I, it just seems like it's going to be a really interesting game, and I like how it started off. It started off. Um, it, I, I don't know, it engaged me right away. Okay. Like I wanted to play more right away. Which is good. Yeah. <laughs> the message you convey to the player is very important in terms of experience. So, for example, you're right, you know, uh, at the beginning, uh, you know, you can use a barrel to, uh, to expose your enemies or everything. So, at the beginning, uh, it was uh, yellow. But it was not enough, you know, in terms of message. So it was not clear for the player. So we said, okay, maybe we could uh, make it read, you know, make, could be more clear, more clear for him. And uh, it was not enough. So we decided at final to put uh, explosive on the and bar. And the next so step, now, if it doesn't work, it's going to explode in your face before. <laughs> <you do it. laughs> the funny thing is that with, with that, like uh, the, the 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 red barrel. I mean, it's kind of common language in video games. And yeah. when we went with Yellow and tried something, we were like, gosh, are we, are we going to do another <laughs> game with Red Barrel that are going to explode? <laughs> and we were like, no, let, let's try to be a little bit more uh, refined or more subtle, if yeah. I can say. But like David said, uh, sometimes there are things that for us were like the, the, the super cliche, that, oh my god, you know, you try to do something different and you realize that people don't get it, they're so used to, it's always conveyed the same way, and we were forced to, to acknowledge that and, and go back to Red Barrel. <laughs>